It's a bizarre heritage, you know, the idea that there was a different type of human that bred with Homo sapiens and that there's like little bits and pieces of it floating around in people. When most people think of Neanderthals, they imagine a now extinct group of primitive Ice Age humans, distinct from us and left behind in the evolutionary story. Yet recent research has revealed something far more complex. Neanderthals weren't just distant cousins we encountered briefly, they were part of our family history. A groundbreaking new study led by Princeton University has mapped 200,000 years of interbreeding between Neanderthals and modern humans showing multiple waves of contact and shared genetics stretching back far longer than once believed. Using cutting-edge AI-driven genetic analysis, scientists have been able to pinpoint when these interbreeding events occurred and how deeply intertwined these groups really were. This isn't just a story about the survival of our species, it's a story about connection, migration, and the surprising ways our ancestors merged. Mapping 200,000 Years of Interbreeding and my argument is that such a world-changing event occurred between 12,800 and 11,600 years ago. Like we're finding in Russia, mm -hmm. and uh, there's uh, many of them that are being discovered all over the world now, these subspecies of yes. human beings. Yeah. But f first of all, let's take the Neanderthals. Okay. The latest scientific on, uh, evidence on the Neanderthals is that they were symbolic creatures, that they did do art, that they were in every sense human. That's why certain populations in the world today still have three to five percent of Neanderthal uh, DNA. When the first Neanderthal remains were discovered in Germany's Neander Valley in 1856, they sparked debates about who these ancient beings were and how they related to us. Were they our enemies, our friends, or perhaps something even closer? For decades, the prevailing narrative painted Neanderthals as a side branch of human evolution that died out as modern humans advanced. But recent genetic research, led by Joshua Akey at Princeton University, has dismantled that notion, showing that our histories were deeply intertwined. Using a novel genetic analysis tool called IBD Mix, Akey and his team have been able to map waves of interbreeding between modern humans and Neanderthals, revealing a complex pattern of contact that spanned hundreds of millennia. Their findings indicate three distinct periods of gene flow. The first occurred between 200,000 and 250,000 years ago, shortly after modern humans evolved their recognizable features. A second wave took place about 100,000 to 120,000 years ago, and the largest interbreeding event happened 50,000 to 60,000 years ago as modern humans migrated across Eurasia. This genetic record reshapes the timeline of human expansion and contradicts older models that suggest our ancestors remained isolated in Africa until relatively recently. Instead, the evidence points to early dispersals, returns to Africa, and continuous encounters with other hominin groups. These findings were made possible because IBD Mix doesn't rely on comparing living humans to a reference population thought to lack Neanderthal DNA. Instead, it uses AI to detect shared DNA segments between living humans, Neanderthals, and even Denisovans giving a clearer picture of ancient contact. This innovation helped Aki's team identify traces of modern human DNA within Neanderthal genomes themselves, a perspective rarely examined in previous research. By reversing the lens, the team could see that some early interbreeding left no mark on us because those offspring stayed with Neanderthal populations. The implication of these discoveries extend beyond the timing of our contact. They provide critical insights into how Neanderthals, with their smaller populations, were gradually absorbed into expanding modern human groups. Rethinking Neanderthal Stereotypes but Humans our ancestors interbred with Neanderthals. This is about 50,000 years ago that this happened. And there's still a remnant of that interbreeding in the genomes of many modern humans living today. For over a century, Neanderthals were mischaracterized as brutish and primitive, a foil for the supposedly superior modern human. But archaeology and now genetics are rewriting that story. Neanderthals were skilled hunters and toolmakers capable of surviving Europe's harsh Ice Age environments. They even practiced forms of medical care, treating injuries with surprisingly advanced techniques. Far from being an evolutionary dead end, 
They were well-adapted humans who thrived for hundreds of thousands of years before merging with our ancestors. The new genetic studies support the idea that our interactions with Neanderthals were far more nuanced than once believed. The interbreeding events revealed by Aki's research indicate that these two groups not only coexisted geographically, but shared intimate connections. The evidence suggests that cultural exchange may have occurred alongside genetic exchange. Archaeological findings of similar tools and artifacts across regions occupied by both groups bolster this theory. Moreover, these interbreeding events likely occurred in multiple locations, challenging older assumptions that contact was confined to one or two areas, such as the Levant. Instead, the patterns of gene flow hint at repeated encounters across Eurasia, from the Middle East to Europe, and possibly beyond. This reflects a vision of humanity on the move, migrating, returning, and merging in dynamic ways that shaped our shared history. Even the way we think about Neanderthal extinction changes under this model. Aki prefers the term assimilation over extinction. His team estimates that Neanderthal populations were smaller than previously believed, around 2,400 breeding individuals instead of 3,400, making them particularly vulnerable to demographic changes. Over time, as modern humans expanded, Neanderthals weren't annihilated, they were absorbed. Their DNA lives on in us, providing evidence of their enduring legacy and traits related to immunity, metabolism, and even skin pigmentation. Pinpointing when and where interbreeding happened. In 2010, a group of scientists from the Max Planck Institute in Germany sequenced the genome of a Neanderthal fossil for the first time and compared it with ours. That no Neanderthal fossils were ever found in Africa indicates that they interbred with Homo sapiens in Europe and Asia. The most accepted theory is that Homo sapiens would have mixed with Neanderthals between 40 and 60,000 years ago when they advanced from Africa to the north. One of the most remarkable aspects of these studies is how precisely they can now date interbreeding events. The Princeton's team's research identifies a major interbreeding wave between 50,000 and 60,000 years ago, a period aligning with modern humans' dispersal into Eurasia. This timing coincides with archaeological evidence of modern humans moving into regions previously dominated by Neanderthals, particularly in the Middle East and Europe. Complementing this work, researchers at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology analyzed ancient genomes from the Rannis cave site in present-day Germany dating back around 45,000 years. These remains, which include some of the oldest nuclear genomes of modern humans, share the same traces of Neanderthal ancestry seen in Aki's data. Interestingly, these individuals represent a genetic lineage that left no living descendants, suggesting that early human expansions into Europe may have involved populations that ultimately disappeared. Another key site is the Konoprusi Caves in Chechia, where a skull known as Zlati Kun was discovered. Genetic analysis, dated to roughly the same period, reveals a close relationship to those at Rannis. Together, these findings paint a picture of small, isolated human groups spreading across Europe and interbreeding with local Neanderthals. While most of these groups eventually died out, they left behind genetic traces that persist today. What Neanderthal DNA means for us today? We found that um, Neanderthal DNA indeed does influence many traits in modern humans. And it's a diverse array of traits. So traits involved in the immune system, traits involved in our skin, but also traits, psychiatric traits and neurological traits. While much of the Neanderthal DNA in humans was eventually lost, the genetic material that remains continues to influence us. Non-African populations typically carry about 1-2% to Neanderthal ancestry, with these segments concentrated in genes related to immunity, skin pigmentation, and metabolism. These traits may have conferred advantages to early humans adapting to new environments outside Africa, such as resisting local pathogens, or tolerating colder climates. Leonardo Iassi of the Max Planck Institute notes that most of the selection on Neanderthal DNA occurred within about 100 generations of interbreeding. This suggests our ancestors quickly retained the beneficial genes while discarding others that were either neutral or harmful. Studies have linked Neanderthal DNA to immune responses that help fight infections, but also to certain conditions like allergies and even type 2 diabetes. These associations highlight how the legacy of interbreeding continues to affect us in complex ways. Now it's time to hear from you. What do these discoveries say about our shared past? Let us know in the comments section below.